Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital Muse YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Christina and Michael found Sonny writing his vows before he married Nina on his island in Puerto Rico. Sonny claimed that in order to avoid ruining the wedding, he and Nina had slept in different beds the night before. Christina expressed her happiness at Sonny and Nina's elopement. Thanking Christina for attending the wedding, Sonny recalled that she had been among the first members of his family to be accepting of Nina. Nina had a flashback of finding Sonny at Nixon Falls in 2021 when she was still on the island. As Nina reminisced about her wonderful times with Sonny, including their admission that they were in love and Sonny's proposal months prior, a sequence of flashbacks played on screen. When Donna came up to Nina, she expressed her happiness that Nina was getting married to Sonny. When Nina asked Donna to be the flower girl at the wedding, Donna was overjoyed. Nina urged Donna to make sure Sonny didn't meet the bride since she believed it was unlucky for the groom to see her before the wedding. Willow dreamed at a cabin on the island that Harmony was trying to warn her about someone, but she was unable to understand a word Harmony said. When Willow woke up, she noticed Michael and Wiley. It was time to get ready for the wedding, Michael declared. Soon after, Sonny and Michael were standing outside. Sonny revealed that Carly had agreed to Sonny's desire to elope when he told her about the wedding. Michael expressed his satisfaction with Sonny and Carly's reconciliation and that it was time for everyone to move on. Michael claimed that he was reminded of Morgan by the ocean. Sonny claimed to think of Morgan on a daily basis. Michael mentioned that he believed Morgan would be pleased for Sonny. Michael continued by saying that he was also pleased for Sonny. Sonny gave Michael a bear embrace. To assist Nina in getting ready for the wedding, Christina and Willow met her at the living quarters. With Willow and Christina all around her, Nina was ecstatic, following the idea of something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, Christina gave Nina a pair of earrings to borrow. Then Christina gave Nina the beautiful scarf Maxie suggested. This covers the old and the blue, Willow replied, passing Nina a turquoise necklace that had been Harmony's. Willow claimed that on her 16th birthday, Harmony had given her the necklace. Willow mentioned that Harmony had told her that turquoise was meant to bring good fortune, serenity, and protection. This is fantastic. I adore it. I'll cherish it forever, Nina exclaimed, almost breaking down in tears. Willow and Christina were thanked by Nina. Willow seemed to stare up at Nina as she hugged her, and she said, thank you. Back outside a few moments later, Christina grinned as she saw Blaze's text message. Blaze encouraged Christina to enjoy herself at the wedding and recommended that they get together once Christina got back to Port Charles. In the middle of an abundance of flower arrangements, Sonny stood close by and started to pray. I'm getting married today. It's not my first, as we both know. All I can hope for is that this is my last. I was a stranger in my own life until Nina entered it. She restored my sense of wholeness, and I began to think that my current existence would suffice even if I lost all memory of my past. A miracle then transpired. I regained my identity. I thought of my kids and my grandkids. However, I was unable to get rid of my feelings for Nina. Sonny declared, I love her with all of my heart. Sonny spoke again as he folded his hands in prayer. Lord, please assist me to make today extra wonderful. Assist me in giving Nina the happiness she deserves, Sonny said. When Nina called Ava again in the living room, she was perplexed as to why Ava was still not picking up. In her voicemail, Nina stated that she was in Puerto Rico and that today was her wedding. As Nina left Ava a voicemail, she became emotional. I just wanted to let you know that today is the happiest day of my life. I was just thinking about you. And Ava, I wanted to say thank you. I appreciate your friendship and your unwavering support. I wish you were here right now so we could discuss everything, but you're always there for me. However, I promise you that as soon as I return to the city, we will grab a drink and discuss everything under the sun. I cherish you. You are missed. See you soon, Nina remarked. 
A little while later, Christina, Michael, Donna, Wiley, and Willow were standing close by as Sonny greeted a priest. As Wiley was to carry the ring during the wedding, Michael gave him instructions. At that moment, Michael got a text. I am aware of the person accountable for reporting Drew Kane. Dial me. The message said, Michael's gaze expanded. As best man, Michael put his phone away and stood by Sonny. Michael gave the priest a nod, indicating that Sonny was prepared to start the ceremony. Donna arrived wearing a pale pink gown, tossing red rose petals to the ground before Sonny planted a kiss on her forehead. Wiley took the rings and followed Donna. After Wiley, Willow wore a sleeveless dress with a tropical motif. Following Willow in a bright blue sleeveless dress, Christina wrapped her arms around Sonny and gave him a hug. As the bridal chorus began to play, Sonny turned to find Nina wearing a white gown with flowers arranged on one shoulder. Nina's hands held a bunch of flowers. Sonny and Nina gave each other a warm smile. Vex and Jocelyn were ecstatic to meet each other at the dorm. Jocelyn was informed by Dex that Sonny and Nina had run away. According to Dex, Christina and Michael had received invitations from Sonny to the wedding, and Carly was aware of it. When Jocelyn expressed that she felt left out and all alone in this grudge now against Sonny, she broke down in tears. A knock was heard by Dex and Jocelyn, and Pilar showed up. If Jocelyn had heard from Ava, Pilar inquired. Pilar mentioned that she hadn't heard from Ava since the previous evening and that she had a bad feeling something wasn't right. Dex urged Pilar to get in touch with Dante and mentioned that he and Jocelyn would keep a lookout for Ava. Dex expressed his belief that Ava was in danger once Pilar departed. Dex texted someone, letting them know he was heading out to look for Ava. Jocelyn expressed her want to assist. Dex nodded, and the two of them headed out. Austin was standing close by as Cyrus was brought in handcuffed into the courtroom at the courthouse. Cyrus disclosed that a judge was thinking about releasing him from Pentonville, early because of his advanced age and physical condition. Austin was appreciated by Cyrus for speaking for him. According to Austin, he was not given an option. When Scott showed up, he declared that he was speaking on behalf of Cyrus. It would be challenging to persuade the judge that Cyrus posed no threat to society, according to Scott. Once the hearings began, a judge inquired as to Cyrus's eligibility for release from Pentonville. According to Scott, Cyrus had found God and was no longer a threat to the community. Following a passionate plea from Scott, Cyrus's release was endorsed by Warden Garton and Austin. Ava cried out for assistance from a dark basement in an unidentified home. Mason informed Ava that no one was coming to her aid as he descended a set of steps. Mason made fun of Ava by claiming that there was a rat infestation in the basement. Ava would remain in the basement, Mason said, until he got more instructions. Ava promised herself she would find a way out, and before long, she noticed a container close by. Ava climbed up to an overhead window using two crates. When Mason reappeared, he gloated that bars were on the outside and the window was nailed shut. You're not leaving until the boss says you do, Mason replied. When Cyrus returned to the courthouse, he was observed being led, still wearing chains, out of the courtroom. Cyrus said, Bless you, as soon as he saw Austin. Austin picked up his phone and called Mason right away. Mason was told by Austin to release Ava. Mason menacingly glanced at Ava. Oh, you know by now neither one of us is calling the shots. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.